film and we did the last 12 or 14 films together and we just finished, as I said, the uh, Bad Lieutenant, which uh, was shot in New Orleans. So Joe lives nearby and we somehow misjudged the, the running time of the film. I thought it was longer. The play is faster than previous. Uh, please go ahead with your questions. That's why we are here. Gentlemen here, yeah. Yes, I wanted to ask, now that you've had some time to think about it, why do you think it is that monkeys uh, don't ride on him? <laughs> there was no, no time to think about it because you only have one chance to go to uh, Antarctica. You cannot uh, test the waters. You cannot uh, go there and... Uh, and start uh, preparing things and meeting things. I, I was just flown into it and the very moment I landed I started to make connections and try to uh, befriend people and uh, convince them that we were doing some serious work there. It didn't look like anything at all because we were two guys and that was that. But, however, the uh, the monkey uh, riding, the ape riding on the goat, that was an idea I had fairly early. And I had uh, an artist doing it. Uh, he is actually one of the uh, people, the artists who works for the New Yorker and does title, uh, titles for the New Yorker magazine. And uh, we tested a couple of sketches I had a clear idea what I needed, and uh, the first sketches that came in, the uh, goat was too much in profile, and, but I wanted to have it riding into real, riding into the sunset, and it should look like in a, like in a real bad western of the 1950s. And, and we got it very quickly, and I am very happy that it's in the film. <laughs> Monument Valley it was the setting. There it goes. Yeah. How did you get all that underwater footage? How did I get all the underwater footage? Well, some of it existed before I did the film. And that was the reason I went there. And some of the footage that was shot three years earlier was used in a film uh, called The Wild Blue Yonder, a science fiction film Joe and I did together. And uh, I immediately had the feeling this is not our planet anymore. This is somewhere in the outs, uh, outer reaches of the Andromeda Nebula and, and I, I had the feeling this is not water, it must be liquid helium, <laughs> which actually is, is three uh, degrees away from absolute zero, minus 270 degrees Fahrenheit or so, or Celsius, I don't even know exactly. And uh, so, uh, the uh, the wild blue yonder uh, spins a wild yarn uh, about this foreign planet, uh, which is called the wild blue yonder. Brad Dourif is uh, the only alien that we see in the movie, and he's a very good alien, actually. <laughs> and there was some other footage in the wild blue yonder which I discovered, uh, and that was uh, footage shot in 1989 by astronauts on a space shuttle mission. They actually released the, the Galileo space probe, which was the, the starting point of my curiosity. And uh, Galileo became famous uh, as a space probe because it was a mission that lasted 14 years and at early times of uh, computers actually the, the mission was concocted much prior to that and it was delayed, delayed, it delayed and <clears throat> they came, these astronauts who deployed the Galileo space probe uh, from the cargo bay of the space shuttle um, they uh, filmed themselves and at that time probably the last time ever on celluloid, 16 millimeter celluloid and I think yeah, yeah it was home movies basically they shot 16 of them. And and was never seen by anyone. And I discovered it in a in a, a decrepit old uh, NASA archive in Pasadena, which is in a in a warehouse. And hardly anyone, even NASA people, hardly know that it exists. And it has millions and millions of exhibits of test results and 
photos from, from the early age of space exploration dating back into the late, 50, uh, late 40s even of some, some early rockets, failed rocket attempts and it has uh, some <coughs> extraordinary beauty and, and nobody ever saw this and found this and I found it and this is one of the reasons why I love to be in, in Los Angeles because I keep saying that Los Angeles is a city with the most substance, with the most cultural substance in the United States, far superior than New York. In nowhere in New York you would find an archive like El Archivo de las Indias in Seville, where all the documentation and all the log books of Columbus and all the lawsuits of um, Cortes are actually filed and stored and, and open for the public now. And, and here we have it, and it's only 30 minutes by car away from here. When, when you drive over to Pasadena, you reach a place in 30 minutes, and it's fantastic. You have it here, and hardly anyone knows about it. We had a friend, uh, Henry Kaiser, who uh, you see in this film, and when we were doing Grizzly Man, we were doing a soundtrack and Henry was producing the music, and Richard Thompson did the uh, soundtrack. And well, the first, I think the first day we were recording, Henry, who's also a professional diver, as you saw in this film, came up and he said, hey, have you, did I show you uh, the footage from my, one of my dives in Antarctica? And he had it on his laptop, and he showed it to us, and it was just that kind of thing. So it was mind-boggling. Yeah. I have to correct you, he didn't show it to us. I was always sitting with the musicians in between them and there are two glass walls to the um, uh, to the to the room where they where they do the recording yeah, and mixing control room, the yeah. control room and uh, somehow in the corner of my eye through these windows I saw that Henry had his laptop and he turned it around for a moment and for two seconds I saw some, something that I had never seen in my life, but he was something like 30 feet away from me. And I immediately stopped the musicians and I said, hold it, hold it, I must see that. <laughs> and I rushed over to, uh, to the control room where, where Henry, and I said to Henry, what was that? Play it again. And Henry showed it to me and he was very apologetic and he said, ah oh, yeah, this is just amateur stuff. And it's not, he, he didn't really like it that much himself. And I said, Henry, you idiot. <laughs> I, I've never seen anything as beautiful as that. And, and asked him, could I use this for the white blue yonder? Yes, he said, yeah, go ahead. And maybe it sees the day of, the, the light of, of day. And, uh, and it continued bothering me. And I kept saying to Henry, go back, uh, shoot more and shoot longer. Uh, sequences, hold your camera longer on something, go closer to certain objects that you see there and that interest you. And he kept filming and then when we, uh, when we went down to Antarctica he filmed more and we were at his diving 